I'm Tomáš uh, and I'm product owner for Packet Project and here we have Brian, the lead of the CentOS project or, or like, uh, actually Brian, can you introduce yourself? <laughs> Sure. Uh, yeah, my name is Brian Stinson. I'm the technical lead for uh, the, the CentOS stream team. Uh, we work in the community platform engineering group uh, here at Red Hat. So Tomas, I think you're going to start us off with uh, uh, talking a little bit about containers and all that stuff, and then we'll go back and forth. Um, uh, we'll have a few uh, different interesting ways that you can consume CentOS stream. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, uh, okay. I'm I'm gonna share my screen. And before I do that, so if you wanna participate yourselves, uh, Jen posted links to the content of the workshop and also to uh, like a two way how you can download your either PM images or container images. And it would be great if you did it right now. For example, for me, it took me like five minutes to download the Vagrant boxes. So if you wanna participate, please. Uh, download them now. Thank you, Jen. And I'm going to share my screen right now. And in here you can see my terminal. Uh, in the to the like upper side, the I'll have my notes. And I hope that it's not too disrupting. And on the bottom side, that's where I'll be running my commands. So one of the ways you can actually consume CentOS Stream is via container images. And uh, I hope that I don't need to introduce what container images are since we're in DevConf and this is a hot topic past five years, I would say. Uh, so the container images for CentOS stream I hosted at quay.io in the CentOS namespace. Uh, you can see the link right over here. Uh, they are available in three architectures, uh, the normal AMD64, which is probably what your laptop has. And then the additional ones are ARM64 and uh, PowerPC64 uh, little in the end. And obviously I'm gonna be using the one for Intel because I don't have the other hardware. I have Raspberry Pi, but it's still 32 bits. So, uh, okay, so let's, let's pull the image. And I already did that and so it will be very quick. Actually, if you are familiar with Podman, and this is something with Carl mentioned to me when we were preparing this workshop, there's a feature in Podman 3.0 called short names. So when you are in, when you are using Podman 3, you can actually just do Podman pull CentOS dash stream eight, and it will work. It will figure out that the home for the CentOS image is Quay. So that's going to be even shorter. So now we have our image here. I have it on my laptop and I can invoke it and try it out. So let's do that. So I'm doing a dash, dash, dash RM. So that is just like a throwaway container that I don't want it to linger on my host and TIR so that we can actually run a bash inside. And that's it. I'm running CentOS stream right now on my Fedora laptop. And let's see if that's actually a reality. So I'm gonna uh, scroll and look at what's inside the CEO's release. And you can see that this is in this, in the CentOS stream made. And for me, this is actually a really great way to try different like operating systems or versions. Or I usually do this when I uh, when I want to see like what version of a package is in this certain like CentOS stream or Fedora 32. So for me, this is a super convenient way to do it. Also, it's it's a fresh environment. So if you need to like I don't know like test something or try something, you can get fresh environment like this very easily and it's, it's super productive for me. Uh, one thing you can do right now uh, is you can install packages or you can just update it uh, because like the images and the composes or like packages have different lives. So if I run the NF update, there is possibility that there will be some updates. 
so you can do that if you want. And you can see that uh, metadata is being downloaded like the usual stuff. So one thing you could also notice uh, is that I was using, okay, let's not do that right now. I'm going to quit it. And one final thing I wanted to mention about container images, and that is that I was using the stream eight as like the tag of the image. And it's actually important to distinguish because you, uh, I could have just done this like without the eight and I would still, it will still work. But since we'll have CentOS stream nine soon, like I, I wouldn't know what exactly is inside. So it's very good practice to actually like pick the actual version so that you are not surprised that suddenly there are completely different versions of things and your software breaks, like always tune to a specific version so that you know what's exactly inside. Uh, and that's actually how you can run CentOS stream in containers. Uh, I'll hand it over to you, Brian. So uh, you should have a, a cockpit window and a terminal here on your screen. Um, hopefully you can see that. The, I think the next topic that we wanted to talk about is um, what do you do if you have a CentOS Linux 8 machine, but you want to try out CentOS stream? I think one of the um, one of the important goals that we had, you know, dealing with with all of the things going on in in the stream world right now was uh, we wanted to make it uh, we wanted to make it pretty simple to take an existing CentOS Linux eight machine and just migrate it over to stream and start uh, you know getting regular updates. And so I think Jen posted in the chat there uh, a link to our GitHub uh, the that's some of the materials that we're using for this workshop today. Uh, in that. Uh, in that folder there, you should find a Vagrant CentOS Linux upgrade um, directory. That's got a Vagrant file that'll take you from, uh, it'll start you from a CentOS Linux machine and then uh, we can sort of walk through the steps here. Really, like I said, we wanted to make it as, as easy as possible. Um, so right now it's, it's actually three steps. Uh, there's three commands to run to take a Linux machine upgrade it to stream. In the future, uh, we're kind of moving around uh, some of the packages and where they live in all of the different repos. We're, we're hoping to get that down to uh, just two steps uh, at the end. So um, you, you can see here on the screen, I've got my Vagrant boxes up. Uh, so I just need to run in and SSH into it. So if you run into that, uh, if you're doing this at uh, on your workstation at home, in that directory, just hit Vagrant up and you'll get to uh, to this stage right here. So um, to talk a little bit about how this works, uh, you know, every operating system has two different release packages. So there's one that specifies CentOS Linux, one that specifies CentOS Stream, and then there's a set of repositories that uh, that basically tell your system, you know, which how to grab the content for each of those things, and that's what we're going to swap out here. Uh, in order to get access to some of these uh, these repo packages, we're going to run this command. We're going to sudo dnf install centos release stream, and that's just a. This is the step that we're. You know, trying to eliminate in the future, we're trying to get some uh, some things in place so you don't have to do this. But uh, this will get you access to the repos packages. And so, if you do that in the world of live demos, where you know this always takes longer than you uh, than it did when you practice, you should come up with uh, you know just one package that gets added here, downloaded. Yes, we accept the keys, and we're good. So if you look in the uh, in the GitHub as well, the, the second and third steps are there. We need to run a DNF swap. And what that's going to do is it's going to take um, uh, the, like I said, the repos package that uh, points your system at CentOS Linux, swaps it out for a repos package that points you at CentOS stream content. So that is sudo DNF swap. There we go, got it typed out right. CentOS Linux repos for CentOS stream repos. Pretty simple. 
And again, it's got to do a little bit of magic here to find all of those packages. And then it's going to tell us that we're, you know, swapping these things out and uh, doing a little bit of um, of work behind the scenes to get the right CentOS release packages in place. So if you do that, uh, basically what we did was just dropped a whole bunch of YUM repositories, and you can look and see what we did in etc.yum.repos.d. That's where this stuff lives, and you can see. Uh, the listing here, those are all repo files pointing directly at the CentOS stream repositories. We haven't quite yet migrated because we just told our system where to look. So the migration is the final step here. sudo dnf distro sync. Uh, and that does a couple of things. Um, it does a lot of dependency solving and, and things to make sure that you have the right versions of the packages as they exist in all of those repos that we looked at. And if you look at this, once we actually grab the metadata, and do the solving, there's a whole bunch of packages that it's gonna download. So it looks like we have um, you know, eight new package, eight new packages, 184 packages to upgrade. And then once you hit yes, it's going to download all of those. And yeah, especially, um, especially while this stuff is running, uh, like uh, Tomash said in the chat, uh, feel free to ask questions, uh, post them in the chat and we'll, uh, We'll handle those, uh, especially while we're looking at a little bit of um, install time here. I ask a question in the meantime. So you said that you're yeah. trying to trim it to just two commands. So I'm assuming you are eliminating the first one. That's right. That's right. So uh, that first command, um, basically what that does is it gets you access to both um, CentOS Linux repos and CentOS stream repos. It, it tells you where to get uh, get those in both locations. We're trying to ship those repo files, uh, repo packages a little bit differently so that you don't need that uh, that first step there. Um, and, you know, if you're following along, waiting for, um, uh, for that to show up, we'll, we'll definitely be announcing that on the CentOS Devel mailing list, updating our documentation and all of that stuff whenever we're ready to drop that down to, uh, to two steps instead of three. Um, so while this is running, actually, we'll, we'll um, maybe come back to this because um, I think uh, this may take a little bit, um, a little bit more time to run. I'm sure it's uh, if you're following along at home, it's still running on your system too. Um, but I want to talk a little bit about some of the other, uh, the other ways that you can consume CentOS Stream in various environments because you know we had talked about doing it in, in containers. Um, we got a little peek right here at, at the Vagrant boxes because that's, you know, we're, we are publishing them for CentOS Linux, but I wanna talk a little bit about uh, some of the cloud properties that you might want to, uh, to use CentOS Stream in. And the first one, we can talk a little bit here about uh, AWS. And there's a page out on the wiki. Um, you can check it out, it's wiki.centos.org slash cloud slash AWS. And again, all of these links are in our, uh, our, our GitHub repo there. Uh, this describes a little bit about, um, you know, all of the Amazon machine images that we produce as part of our uh, build and deliver process. And there's, you know, a lot of good documentation in here. Um, if you've got your own uh, EC2 uh, um, namespace configured setup, you've got, you know, all of your um, private connections and, and or private clouds and all that stuff. Uh, you can actually pull this this in. We automatically keep this page up to date whenever we see new machine images into AWS. And so if you scroll down a little bit on that page, you'll see, um, again, this is a whole bunch of, of stream eight images seeded into each of the Amazon regions. And so like, let's, um, uh, you know, if you do most of your work in US East 1, then you have 
a machine ID attached to that uh, that will um, that will be best to spin up in that uh, in that zone. And even on uh, you know down towards the uh, towards the bottom of the list, you can even see we have some ARH sixty four. Uh, if you want to use some of the fancy AWS hardware. So let's go back and check on our Vagrant install. Looks like it's still running, which is fine. The other thing that we, um, that we also like to show off a little bit is um, all of these artifacts that we work with, you know, whether we're seeing them into AWS or, you know, if you come up across, uh, you know, another cloud that, you know, maybe we haven't put images in ourselves, um, we don't have uh, official images, you know, posted to uh, to Google Compute Engine or you know any of those places, but you do have the ability to go out and look at our. Um, oops, sorry, this is the wrong. Tab. We'll get to the right place here. So cloud.centos.org is where you can go uh, to see if you can get other images for other places. And we publish these on a, on a regular basis. Uh, they do have a little bit of a different life cycle than you know, some of the composes. They don't get generated every day, but, um, but they do come out uh, fairly frequently. The uh, um, under the eight stream directory, you can see some of the ones that we publish, and we've got images for ARH64, um, PowerPC, uh, and x86-64. And so we're going to drill down into this directory a little bit, and you know, hint for what's coming again. You can see we've got uh, vagrant boxes for uh, a few different versions here. This is this one right here. The CentOS Stream EC2 image is the one that we're going to take a look at here in just a minute uh, about spinning that up, you know, directly in in AWS. That's the one that gets translated into each of those uh, AMIs for each of the regions. But then there's this generic cloud image, and that's pretty useful for a a, a couple of different uh, uses. I actually use it sometimes on my workstation when I you want to bring up a VM really quick. Um, it's also really useful if you know you have a fairly standard cloud provider. You can you know try uploading this image, do your thing with cloud in it, and uh, you know a lot of times it'll uh, it, it'll just work in your, your your cloud namespace there. So cloud.centos.org is a good uh, is a really good place to go and, and check out if you want to end up getting some. Uh, uh, some images to deploy in other places. So while we're waiting a little bit more before we move on to AWS, um, is anyone following along at home? Anyone else have their uh, their Vagrant setup migrated yet? It looks like we're just about finished. So Brian, in the meantime, we got several questions. Yeah. And. The first one is from Steven Gallagher, and he's asking for people who are not working for Red Hat, how they can contribute new features to Stream 8 or Stream 9. Ah, that's, yeah, that's a really good question. Um, so, and I think we'll get, uh, we'll get into some details here in just a minute. Um, so we know for sure, and this is, you know, talking a little bit about build processes and, um, and how we get things done in the in the project. Um, we know CentOS Stream 8, you can think of it built, um, you know, sort of, we call it inside out. Uh, and what we mean by that is, um, if you know how uh, CentOS Stream works in relation to RHEL, it's meant to be a development location. It represents uh, content that's coming in a, you know, upcoming minor release of Red Hat Enterprise Linux. Um, so Stream 8, it's, uh, it's consumable. You can see it, you know, here in the artifacts that you have. Really, this is not the contribution workflow that we're, uh, we're stuck with. 
this is not the contribution workflow that we're doing, uh, that we're looking at long term, because really we get source code, build it, and then, um, you know, out comes the, uh, these different artifacts that we have. Uh, and I'll, I'll talk a little bit about um, the things that you can do, uh, you know, here in just a few minutes, we'll, we'll go over what you can, uh, you know, some of the things you can do with your, your fancy CentOS Stream 8 machine that you uh, have either migrated to or, or upgraded from. Um, but uh, again, to the, uh, to the point there, the intention is for CentOS Stream 9, uh, the, all of the package sources uh, and even, you know, if the, uh, Tomas, you can uh, chime in here a little bit about source Git, but uh, those are going to be directly contributable by the public. So the, the intention is you'll have, there will be a namespace in GitLab. Uh, you point at the CentOS stream repos or the, the CentOS stream uh, Git repositories. You can make merge requests against those uh, and the, the realm maintainers consider them and, you know, make sure it's, it's right for the next minor release of Red Hat Enterprise Linux. But um, that's a big shift, um, you know, both in terms of the work that we have to do to get the workflow up and running, but also making rel development uh, happen out in the public. And so that's a, that's a big deal about what we're looking for. Yeah, I personally can't wait for like when we open the gates with GitLab and everyone will be able to contribute, especially when all yeah. these repos will be set like hooked up with CI so that whatever you contribute to, we will run all the tests on your contributions to make sure that they are not breaking like the rest of the distribution or that the change is actually working. This is going to be super awesome. Yeah. Yeah, and I think the... the um... The, the key point there that you you mentioned too is uh, it, it is really nice to treat uh, tests just like we do other code uh, because that's a that's a really good contribution point too. So, did we have uh, other questions in the? Oh community? yeah, we have. Honza Horak is very active with the questions, so I, I, I'll have to read his question because it's really complex. <laughs> so Honza. Uh, is asking, CentOS Stream is assumed to be RHEL 8.x, right? And are the builds rebuilt in CentOS Infra or are those RHEL RPMs directly? Ah, yeah, that's that's a really great question, actually. Um, so those are, um, they're, they're built from the same sources, but they are built in different infrastructure. So it's not, uh, it's not directly the bits that you get if you're a, a Red Hat customer, you know, for uh, consuming RHEL. It is a, a, a two different builds, and that's going to continue, uh, you know, over into Stream 9. There's two separate build systems, uh, two separate composed systems. You know, they're, they're separate that way. They do consume the same sources. So, you know, whether it's, you know, RHEL first and then send out Stream 8, or if it's sent out Stream 9 into RHEL 9 in the future workflows, separate uh, build systems, separate workflows. We can look at, at one of those here real quick. So koji.inbox.centos.org. This is our build system for CentOS Stream 8. And you can go out uh, and sort of follow along about uh, you know, what's coming through and look at the logs and, and things like that. Uh, the, the RHEL build system is completely you know, inside Red Hat. And so it's not really uh, necessarily consumable, but um, but here's what you can uh, look at to follow along with CentOS Stream 8. And another question from Honza is, if there is a way to see usage of CentOS Stream 8 in comparison to CentOS Linux 8? Uh, yeah, so the... Um, that's a that's a tricky question, uh, especially because of um, you know a lot of the way that we actually deliver CentOS Stream and even CentOS Linux and you know some of the previous releases, um, we've got a, a a pretty complex mirror network, which means that anyone can go out and uh, you know sync the content, put it on their mirror, and then make it available to you know 
tens, hundreds, millions of machines behind a um, you know behind a firewall somewhere. So it's really hard to actually gather that sort of data. I know there's um, there's a little bit of work that uh, that happened in recent versions of DNF uh, that the Fedora project is using to help with you know some of that count uh, count metadata. But you know up up until this point, we really haven't like we don't keep uh, that much in terms of logs on the mirror network and you know where you're actually downloading the content from. So um, yeah, it's it's a little bit hard to guess about uh, about things like that. So uh, yeah, so we just finished up our um, our Vagrant install, uh, and you can see here uh, from the CentOS release file, we've got CentOS Stream 8, and we're all migrated. So that is a great place to be. Let's take a look at AWS. Oops. So I'm going to copy in a snippet here, and this snippet is in the notes on our GitHub repository, and then we'll talk through what's going on here. Maybe, not that one. Got the wrong paste in here. Yeah, so I've got the, um, the AWS command line tools, and you know we just looked over at uh, at cloud.santos.org and saw the machine images that we did, and we looked at if you remember we looked at this page uh, right here that describes the AMI IDs, and we pulled the uh, the right one for the uh, the region that I'm working in, and it's really as simple as this. Uh, we're telling the AWS command line tools to use this image, uh, give me one of them, uh, a t2.micro sized instance, and then I've got some extra variables that are set here in my environment to, uh, to give my subnet ID, and uh, we want to tell it to give us a public IP address. Simple as that. Once we run that, we've got a pending machine here, and I'm going to give you a peek into my AWS console. Ooh. Let's reset this back to it always take just a few minutes to spin up. So it uh, looks like we might have another question while we're watching this on the on the screen. Oh, oh yeah, I was trying to answer it in chat in the meantime. So the fourth question is from Richard Alway, and he's asking at which point we are removing the branding of Red Hat in the import process for stream or CentOS? Ah, as, yeah, again, so this is going to be uh, sort of a tale of two different workflows. Um, so you've got the Stream 8 workflow and the Stream 9 workflow, uh, and they're going to be uh, you know, just a little bit different. Um, I'll talk a, a little bit about what we're doing for the Stream 8 workflow right now. Um, and, and again, like I said, you know, builds happen in RHEL, uh, we get the sources for them and then build, you know, then after that we build CentOS Stream 8. Um, when I say build there, what I basically mean is we take the sources and if it's not already debranded, we have some stuff that, um, uh, some packages that have rules that, uh, you know, give you the, the commit that landed, uh, the, the source code that landed in Red Hat Enterprise Linux, but then we layer on another commit that, uh, it makes it a little bit easier for us to strip out branding and, and stuff like that. Um, but, you know, there, there are some packages that do need a, a little bit of, um, of extra attention. And right now, uh, folks on my team are handling that as they come in. So we just have a list of, uh, of packages. One, you know, one really important one is Anaconda. Um, we always put a few uh, different patches in that, uh, that spec file and then build it for uh, CentOS Stream 8. For CentOS Stream 9, uh, and again, this is a sort of a, a preview to coming workflows, um, we're trying to get as much of that uh, conditionalized as possible. So you, could, you have flags that you 
know if you're building in a CentOS environment or if you're building in the Red Hat Enterprise Linux environment. And I think there's a lot of um, uh, there's a lot of work to be done on that side just to, to make sure that the branding flows in the right direction. Um, I think there's there's always going to be some content that is um, you know never truly matched one to one between uh, Red Hat Enterprise Linux and uh, CentOS Stream on a on a branding level because we have things like our trademarks and logos and uh, you know the index page if you visit Apache and, and all of that stuff that's going to continue to be maintained uh, you know separately from uh, uh, from their counterparts in in RHEL. So uh, yeah, back to um, EC2. I uh, sort of stalled for a little bit because this always takes a little bit longer than you expect for machines to show up and um, be available. But uh, so I've got a public IP address here, uh, and the instance is running. So let's run back over here. And I'll give it my AWS SSH key. We can look at CentOS release. We have um, CentOS Stream 8 running in AWS. And then, of course, you can do all kinds of um, magic things with your own workflows and uh, and all of that stuff. There's uh, plenty to do here, but um, the main thing that we wanted to show is it's super easy uh, to get something running in EC2. And of course, uh, anytime you do something with Amazon, you always want to make sure that you go back and terminate your instances because your credit card bill will thank you at the end of the month. So moving on a little bit, uh, so we did, let's see, we've done container images. We talked a lot about the cloud images. We talked about, um, we touched on Vagrant just a little bit. I wanna show, uh, you know, another thing, if you don't wanna go through that, uh, that whole migration process, you know, even though it's three steps right now, I think uh, we can make it a little bit easier. Um, we've actually published a Vagrant box for CentOS Stream 8 directly. And we looked at that in cloud.centos.org. You saw the artifacts for that. There's a directory in our GitHub. Uh, look at it here under Vagrant CentOS Stream. And it's a really, really simple Vagrant file that um, you know, it, it's basically the output of Vagrant init, if you're familiar with that. So if we look at the, at the Vagrant file here, this is the important part. We're looking at the CentOS Stream 8 box, and then I gave it a version of the most recent one that, um, that we just published, but um, but this is available. So if you do Vagrant up in this directory, it's going to pull, I already have this pulled, but it'll pull that image. Um, it, it does a pull through to that, that exact thing that we looked at on cloud.centos.org, and then uh, it'll start one for you. So while we're waiting for this, um, we can uh, talk a little bit and, and focus on, uh, you know, another thing that uh, Tomash mentioned. I think we've seen it in a whole bunch of other places. Um, if you have interesting hardware, um, maybe something that's not x86-64, um, you know, if you have one of those fancy power workstations on your desk, uh, come talk to me because, you know, I'd like to say hi and all that stuff. But you've got options for all of this stuff. To because over here in cloud.centos.org, I need to go two up. 
If you have one of those fancy power workstations, you can download and install, uh, download and use the, uh, the generic cloud image uh, just with libvirt uh, from, from this location too. Same thing for ARC64. Same, and ARC64 even has, you know, as we saw, uh, uh, AMIs that you can spin up in the uh, Amazon Web Services and, and all that stuff. So definitely something to call attention to, including the container images. And that was a lot of fun to, uh, to sort of match what we had in terms of container manifests and stuff in Quay. It makes it really nice to just be able to pull that for something on your architecture. Brian, can this generic image be actually used to import to different clouds like Azure or GCP? Exactly, yeah. So some we know that some clouds require different, um, uh, different configs. And so, like I know Azure is one of them because you know they want you to have um, like a management agent or something on top of what already exists in other places in the distribution. Um, there's so it, it's kind of um, uh, we, we basically need some experts for each individual cloud to tell us what uh, you know what needs to be on the image. But the generic cloud images are a great start to uh, to getting there because a lot of in a lot of places they'll just you know, boot and run. Um, so let's go back here and check on our Vagrant in install. Yeah, so this is our, our CentOS stream image uh, that has booted. And so you can include this in any of your projects. Uh, a Vagrant file like this in any of your projects if you're wanting to target CentOS stream. That's available to you uh, as a box in Vagrant. And th this is, uh, here's the page on, on Vagrant Cloud. You can um, see the, uh, the, the versions that we have and then some suggestions about how to get this on your system too. Uh, we do have both uh, virtual box and libvirt providers available for each of these. So the, um, the question now kind of becomes, you've got all of these options, right? You've got containers, you've got cloud images, you can, we didn't even t really touch on the, uh, the traditional installs, you know, like download a DVD and put it on a, on a system somewhere, but that's, that, that's completely available to you too. Um, that stuff is out on the, on the mirror network where you would normally find these things. So you've got this CentOS stream machine installed, or you've got a, a container image running. Um, what can you do with it? Um, you can do a lot of things. Like you can put it on your laptop. I'm actually running Stream 8 on my laptop right here. Uh, and it's been you know, my daily driver since we, we started the project. Um, you can run a home server on it. Uh, you know, I've got my file server on it that has like, I don't know, maybe two or three uh, containers for random services that I use. Um, you can use it to start playing with containers. So like uh, Tomas mentioned earlier, um, one of the nice things is you get, uh, one of the nice things about stream is you, you get features uh, a little bit faster than you might expect for CentOS Linux. And so Podman 3.0 being delivered in, in CentOS Stream right now, that's, uh, that's a pretty cool thing. And uh, you know, I've been playing around with it you know, ever since it, uh, it dropped in the composes there. Um, but the main thing is install it, run it, put your workloads on it. Uh, but the, uh, you know, kind of in allusion to, uh, to I think Stephen's question from earlier, um, look forward to being able to contribute in a meaningful way, uh, you know, starting pretty soon. Uh, we're, you know, Tomas and I are working together on, on some of those workflows and what that means for CentOS Stream 9. This is gonna be uh, a really important place to, uh, you know, collaborate with people that are working on RHEL in a way that 
gets you features that are useful to you. And so you can propose patches, hang out with us on the mailing list. But even right now, if you head over to Bugzilla, uh, we're treating, because of the, the relationship there between CentOS Stream and RHEL, uh, we're evaluating bugs against the CentOS Stream version. You can see that here, it's, there's actually a version uh, against Red Hat Enterprise Linux 8 called CentOS Stream. We're evaluating bugs that come in under this version as if they were RHEL bugs. That doesn't mean necessarily that, you know, if you're asking for, you know, something new or, you know, pretty big or something like that, like it, it's, it's entirely possible that the maintainers may say no, um, you know, no, meaning this isn't really a good candidate for the next minor release of Red Hat Enterprise Linux, but it's a conversation that you can have. And it's a whole lot easier to have that conversation here in CentOS Stream than it ever was in any of the previous um, uh, CentOS distributions. So you can think of CentOS Linux, if you found a bug uh, at point release day, it could have been another six month cycle before um, you, know, you even uh, get an answer on a bug because the CentOS Linux was so disconnected from where development was happening for RHEL. And that's why, uh, that's why Stream sits where it is. That's why uh, it's important to, uh, to participate here, but also important to use it. So I think those are the demos that we have. Uh, do we have other questions or anything else coming up? We have one more, guys, um, from Computer Kid, whoever that is, asks, is there any good reasons to use CentOS Stream over something like Fedora on a laptop? Uh, yeah, so the, um, and I think it all depends on your, um, uh, kind of your point of view and your, your workload. Um, I, I'm pretty used to running Enterprise Linux uh, and, you know, Fedora is, is one of those things where it's a, uh, um, you know, it's moving pretty fast. It gets a lot of features, and and that's that's actually a really good thing. Um, I've uh, you know I've always ended up running Enterprise Linux on my laptops because I've ran them on my servers and I've just matched them up together. You know, I think the um, the what you're what you're going to get out of the feel of running CentOS Stream on a, a laptop is more uh, more like a workstation than say like a desktop uh, environment or something like that. And uh, I, I, so I, I come from the world of academics. Uh, I ran a bunch of stuff for a mathematics department and you know we loved running Enterprise Linux on the desktop and on our laptops because uh, that matched with our uh, the software workloads that we were running there too. So it's a, it's a personal preference to, uh, to be honest. Um, but, you know, CentOS Stream is, is definitely usable in a workstation environment. So I, I can try a different answer. I mean, I, I would love to run CentOS Stream on my laptop, yeah. but my use case usually is I want to have the latest software possible. Like I want to have the latest container runtime or libraries. So I often ended up running Fedora Rawhide on my laptops. And right now I even have multiple machines with raw height and it's just because that's what I want. But uh, yeah, I would love to stress what Brian said that it really depends what you want to achieve. And if you want stability, definitely go for stream. And if you want latest, greatest, Fedora or even Fedora Rawhide might be the answer. Yeah. 